a Netflix original film. The Wi-Fi is working. In the event of a global communications breakdown, do the following. Stay inside. What just happened here is happening everywhere. Avoid strangers. We've all been deserted. I don't trust them. And most importantly, do not panic. Julia Roberts. What happens next? Mahershala Ali. I knew something was coming. Leave the world behind. Rated R. In select theaters now and on Netflix December 8th. Happy Friday, y'all. Today on CityCast Las Vegas, I'm here with contributor Vogue Robinson. Hey, welcome back, Vogue. And executive producer Sonia Cho Swanson. And we're going to talk about Dr. Miriam Adelson's multi-billion dollar bid for an NBA team, why the sphere might still work in London, and wait for it, what a Vegas-scented candle would smell like. Ah. It's Friday, December 1st. I'm David Figler, and here's what Las Vegas is talking about. Sonia Cho Swanson and Vogue Robinson, welcome to CityCast Las Vegas Friday News Roundup. <laughs> Your radio levels are so high, David. <laughs> I love it. What? <laughs> I've got everything's down here. Hi, David. I'm absorbing the energy. Hello. I'm excited because you're here, Vogue. Yeah, I'm happy to be back. I mean, listeners know that Vogue and I are old friends and we love singing and talking with each other. So it's great to have you on the podcast. And you too, Sonia, of course. Oh, I'm yeah. not leaving you out. Yes. I, I appreciate the amped up energy levels, David, because I have not gotten into my first morning coffee yet. So I'm oh, I'm appreciating. Yeah. And as listeners know, I am probably on my second or third, maybe fourth. Oh, <laughs> I really got to cut back on this coffee. Yeah, right? (laughs) Um, Well, let's jump into a big splash this week is that a notable figure from Vegas is making news in the sports world. Sports, 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 just not in Las Vegas. So you could explain this one for us. Yeah, absolutely. So earlier this week, some news hit the wires that Dr. Miriam Adelson, also known as the widow of Sheldon Adelson, casino magnet at the Sands, was selling $2 billion of stock in Las Vegas Sands. That's about 10% of her stake in the company. Um, uh, Yeah, so big chunk. So she'll still have a stake in the Sands, just not quite as much shmoney. Yeah, only 18 bill left. <laughs> or something How will like, she survive? Yeah, yeah, right, right. She is actually the fifth richest woman in the world. And this actually might fuel a bid to become an even richer woman. She um, is spending $3.5 billion to acquire a majority stake in an NBA team. Specifically, Mark Cuban's beloved Dallas Mavericks. That news came out on Wednesday. And Mark Cuban will still retain control over the Mavs, but it will be... Uh, the Adelson family, who will own the majority stake in the team. And what this means for the Mavs is that they could get even better because they'll have even more money and some, you know, financial backing and financial talent to attract top NBA talent to their team. But here's where it gets even more interesting. Uh, There are some outlets like CNBC that are speculating that this might actually become a foothold for the Adelson family and Sands Corp to expand gaming, maybe even sports betting into Texas, Uh, which, by the way, uh, yeah, yeah. they're the Mm -hmm. second biggest state by population. So, you know, big market. I mean, I had never heard that Dr. Adelson was a big hoops fan. So, yeah, uh, a money play does, you know, I think that tracks. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not currently legal, but Mark Cuban, her her new, uh, I guess, partner in NBA, not crime, partner in basketball, <laughs> um, has expressed <laughs> interest in uh, in expanding sports sports betting to the state. Um, but in the meantime, the Sands Corporation, which is still headquartered in Vegas, has seen its stock value tumble since news of the sale came out this week. So that's interesting. You know, billionaires are citizens of the world, but we claim the Adelsons here. And I'm wondering if this investment in Texas Mm -hmm. represents a divestment of the Adelsons and their money from our community a little bit. Do Mm -hmm. we take it personally? Um, 
I think that, you know, I mean, technically rich people can do whatever they want with their money, blah, 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 blah. We don't have an NBA team. And so because that's been a, a source of kind of contention within the community of whether or not we'll ever get one, as we're slowly becoming kind of a sports city, maybe they just were like, we want to pull the trigger now and we want to we want to own a major NBA team. And I think it's mm-hmm. less about maybe divesting from Vegas. Maybe it's divesting from having all of their eggs in the gambling basket. And maybe it's saying, okay, well, let's switch over to sports. But then mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm afraid of this this idea of them saying, oh, we're, we're it's like a gateway drug <laughs> to, to, to sure. casinos. But I mean, it's it's not like they haven't already been doing that for years now. I think they just sold their last Vegas casino, the Venetian, in 2022. They've mm-hmm. been investing in casinos abroad in like Macau and Singapore. So mm-hmm. this is maybe part and parcel of a long process that Sands has been involved in for years now. Well, the family still owns the Review Journal and the Adelson Clinic, uh, which it provides uh, medical support for people suffering from addiction. Uh, is is still an g- ongoing entity. You know, it's really hard sometimes to track the philanthropy and the investment in a community, uh, especially of a, a, a big family like the Adelsons. I, I still think, though, that Vegas maybe has a little chip on its shoulder when the big names, you know, if our, of our community put their money in other places. I mean, there, it does seem to be a gaming play, and a lot of lot of uh, commentators are already chattering that you know not only will uh, Adelson's presence in Texas with Mark Cuban's desire to bring gaming there and to build a sports complex that also has gaming there, but that there's another player kind of near the scene with Vegas ties, uh, which is uh, Tillman Fertitta, a name well known, another billionaire. He owns the Houston Rockets. Uh, he also wants gambling to be in Texas. So this is all something that's happening. But, you know, more gambling in Texas, more betting in Texas, that's less gambling and less betting in Las Vegas. So is that hurting so? us? It's so complicated. I think so. Well, if you can just kind of drive an hour to your nearest casino in Texas, then there's not like as much appeal to take that trip to Vegas. Maybe that's part of why, as we see gambling expand across the country, that's part of why Vegas is reinventing itself as a sports town, as an entertainment hub. Right. And I think, well, that's the thing, right? We're known as the entertainment capital, which is not just gaming. And so I think as we start expanding kind of what we have to offer, i.e. the sphere, you know, that we Mm -hmm. have different ways of attracting the community, attracting different people from all over the world to our city. And so I'm okay with us decreasing how much we lean lean into gaming as our primary source of income. And if it keeps spreading to other places... You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You know what, though? This is making me think, like, I feel like it's not just us having a chip on our shoulder of, like, oh, this this billionaire is divesting from our community. I think that for better or worse, we look to billionaires as bellwethers. Mm. And so if like a billionaire, yeah. right, is, like, investing in a certain place or investing in a certain city and not investing in our city— I think it makes us a little worried. Like, Mm. is this the future of Vegas? Or is it because we don't have enough water? Or is Vegas still going to be a thriving, you know, metropolis in 10, 20, 30 years? That's where I think maybe some of the underlying uneasiness comes from, at least from Las Vegans. Well, I mean, I think there's a general concept that they have made a lot of money off of our community or being in our community. Yeah. And is there not a commensurate bigger? I mean, they all give. Okay, let's not, let's not suggest that they they are chintzy when it comes right. to charity, but could they give more? You know, could they do even more since they've made so much from us? And what's or that keep concept their business that, in our city. What's that French concept of Noblesse like, oblige. Noblesse oblige. Yes. Yeah. Oh you guys are so fancy today. <laughs> like should there be more of that? I mean so people so many people were sad when Elaine Wynn gave fifty million dollars to LACMA, but now there's a rumor that she might be get you know, giving money to us for an art museum. That sounds amazing. We don't want to lose that energy, right? So what do we need to do to bring that stuff back, right? Mm. Mm. So it, it, in the other realm, in the other direction, because, you know, obviously gaming money means gaming problems and issues hmm. of, of gambling addiction. I'm curious, like, what are the lessons that Texas can learn from us regarding, like, legalized sports betting if they get it? Oof. Now, that's a can of worms. I, I, yeah. I think that a lot of lessons are not being learned about sports betting as it grows so fast. And I think that everyone should take a little pause 
uh, to to look at the bigger picture. So uh, you know what? I'll say this. Uh, if Miriam Adelson is involved in that conversation and for Tita's and others who know what some of the consequences of unbridled gambling are in Las Vegas, mm. that I hope that they would bring those lessons to Texas as they consider that stuff too. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Let's move on to another kind of big item from the news. And again, from a different place with a Vegas connection, the mayor of London has thrown a monkey wrench into the Sphere's expansion there in their city. But it might not be completely over. Vogue, I know you're following uh, the adventures of the Sphere as it tries to replicate (laughs) elsewhere what's happening in London town. Following the bouncing ball. So uh, if (laughs) if the question is, if it's good enough for Vegas, is it good enough for London? And they've been, sorry, side note, they've been talking about this since 2018. It's they've been in conversation. They've done the research. Obviously, proof of concept is the one that we have here in Vegas. So Mm -hmm. it's not like, oh, you didn't know what was coming, I think. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not in these meetings. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. the goal was to put a smaller but pretty much just as impressive sphere in London. And the mayor, based on the studies that they did about how it would impact the community, said no. So they said, you know, the there's going to be light intrusion. There's going to be significant harm to people in the neighboring areas. Literally got down to the numbers and said, okay, there's like 61 homes Hold on, because I want to give you these numbers because wow. they're so like small and also <laughs> interesting. <laughs> huh. that they still care about their people so much. So 61 homes and 177 student rooms would have been affected, according to an expert report um, commissioned by the mayor's planners. So just from that, and then besides that, uh, I think that mm, London sensibilities makes it feel like the sphere would be unsightly, this ugly, gaudy, over-the-top thing in the middle of their beautiful historic city. Adver- advertising-centric. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think he was talking about the advertising component of it and just bombarding the populace and the tourists with, you know, big, big ads. Mm-hmm. And smiley faces and such, or eyeballs. Um, <laughs> eyeballs. But Michael Gove, so, okay, wait, do you guys know London has a Secretary of State for leveling up. <laughs> Le- leveling what? up? <laughs> yes. That's the official title? That's his official title. It's, it's oh, Secretary of State for leveling up housing communities. Wh- wow. And now presenting the glow up czar. I was going to say, is that who you call after a breakup to be like, um, time for my like level up glow up, you know, please help yes. me out here. <laughs> It's like, look, can you hook me up with a better looking person Thank with you. a better personality who will treat me better? Help me Quiet, level up. Everyone, here comes the Reno King. Oh, <laughs> like, I, I think we know. have the Property Brothers already. Yeah, Anywho, exactly. yeah that's back fair. to the focus. One of them. So their secretary of state for leveling up uh, said <laughs> that he wants it to happen. He ha- actually has the power to issue a direction that will allow him to say, no, I want to look at the planning application and I want to make the final decision. I know what the people need. So because of that, things have kind of changed. What do y'all think? Did the London mayor make the right call? Did Vegas maybe not make the right call with the sphere? That's a tough one. The sphere, mm. people love the sphere already, I guess. Does everyone love the sphere? Hey, y'all, do y'all love the sphere? (laughs) (laughs) Right, send us a message. I think that people love that the sphere exists, and I think people love looking at videos of the sphere. I think about whether it's good for a city or not, and then I have mixed feelings. The thing that I'm... tell me. Tell me the mix. Well, the the thing that I'm actually really concerned about is actually light pollution. The, The example that I always think about, do you remember our grasshopper apocalypse that came about like a few years ago in the summer? Oh my God. How could you forget? Still in my nightmares. Yes. But the studies came out and they said that, you know, look, it's probably because of all of the light attracting all these bugs to our city. So I have a prediction. My prediction is that because of the sphere's light pollution, we're going to have the biggest grasshopper apocalypse next May, June, July, 2024. I'm calling it now uh, because of the sphere. Just just saying. Oh, my God. What? Sonia, (laughs) I feel like you always find a way to bring us back to these damn grasshoppers. (laughs) I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed, obsessed with the grasshoppers. <laughs> well, when we're all gone, they'll still be here. That's true. Wow. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah. What do you think, folks? Did the London mayor make the right call? You know, it's surprising and it's 
it's actually nice to see a mayor care so like intently about what yes. <laughs> how how his city is impacted. And that that was the primary goal was like, let's protect the people. Uh, but it's funny because there it seems really dramatic for someone to say, oh, they have to have blackout curtains. How horrible. And I'm like, mm, 300 <laughs> days of sun, extra, extra hot. Like we we already have blackout curtains, many of us here in the city. So like, mm, stop crying. But I, I think for the layout of what London looks like. I think it makes sense for their city to to not necessarily want something as huge as the sphere and what they're what they're kind of known for. Whereas with Vegas, I think that it was something that was interesting. I remember kind of Scott being like, I'm just glad that the skyline's gonna be changed and it's gonna be something interesting again that we haven't had an interesting thing show up on the strip in a while. So I, I almost wish that we had like I think about the sphere like a bird cage, and I just wish we could put like a big like sheet over it at night, so, oh. <laughs> so that it would like not be as bright. I love it. That's kind of what I wish we could like tuck it in, but ours only stays on till eleven p.m. now. So I don't okay. know. I haven't been in. I wish I could afford like tickets. I need somebody to hook me up with tickets, and then I'll give you my real opinion. Until I get inside and see a show and feel the magic that people have said that they feel in this the largest screen ever, then I, I don't think I can I can tell you what I feel about it yet. I, I think we're going to send someone from the CityCast team over there to give some live reporting. So Pre- pay, pay attention to that. That's going to come up soon. Yeah, I know it episode will. coming out. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you know, on the light pollution issue, I'm going to say this, and this is maybe counterintuitive, but I, I think that bridge has been crossed, that that barn door cannot be shut. I mean, mm. w- if you if you call our light pollution that already <laughs> exists a dump of light, this is just throwing on a giant sectional couch onto a pile that's already there, you know? Wow. And so I, I, I get that. <laughs> I do like that the London mayor talks about locals a lot when exactly. discussing big moves. And London is a very different place than Las Vegas, of course. I mean, we're like a hundred and change years old as a city. Uh, London is probably about what two thousand years old as a <laughs> city, like that. right? Um, and they do have some big ass stuff there that we have replicated. I mean, I I think that the high roller is distinctly. I, I'm I'm not the first person to come up with this. It is a rip off of the the London Eye, their big observation wheel that they have, which is part of their landscape. I mean, you can't think of London. Um, the skyline of London without thinking of the London eye and you can't think of Las Vegas without the high roller. And so uh, it, it's interesting going back the other way that they're not as interested in the sphere, at least the mayor. And I think other people too. Uh, I, I wonder though, if it's like, are we already protective of our sphere, right? Oh. Do we not want spheres uh, to pop up in other cities and be a Vegas only attraction? Whether you're for, or against, or neutral about the sphere, and I have kind of all those feelings too, Sonia. Yeah. Um, isn't it already? It's here. It's better for us as a city to have the one and only one. Hmm. So are we, should we root for London to to tank it? <laughs> I would love for us to have the mothership sphere to have like the biggest the and the best uh, sphere, and then I want all the other spheres to be kind of smaller and a little bit less cool. So that people kind of get like the gateway drug of sphere in their city. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, damn, this the is real super sphere. cool. Let's go see the real one. It's like, you know, in Vegas, you go to the fake Eiffel Tower and then you're like, let's go to the real Eiffel Tower oh. in Paris. You know, Do, does anyone have that progression of thought? I, yeah, clear, clearly, many, <laughs> many people do have that. That is, yeah. <laughs> but it could be a reversal for once Vegas could have the real thing and not the replica. Oh, I was I just going to say, like. you know, yeah. to Sonia's point, I I respect that, that idea of like, can we have an original thing that like was that we created? It's kind of, sort of. But Of course, though, we like, didn't yeah. create it. Some billionaire Madison from another Garden. state Somewhere who else. doesn't live here and We're is probably it. not giving big contributions to important charities. The first and largest one, we're just going to yeah. name it a landmark, okay? There first and largest, fair, fair. it's ours. I would love if there was like small ones in other cities that simultaneously played the same thing. 
And oh then at a certain point, I need to sync, set up, update up. our, yeah, sync them up. And then what I really want is for them to be sources for uh, like beam me up Scotties. Oh my God, <laughs> so yes. Like, if they were like touch points for you to like teleport, I'm with it. <laughs> I need to have like a new job. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, the sphere has absolutely immediately caught international attention. Big old articles in like the Atlantic, which yeah. had a really interesting point in it that it's like maybe based on a dystopian sci fi future. Mm-hmm. And then the New Yorker did a big art review, and that guy pointed out, hey, y'all, it's not actually a sphere, it's just the cap of a sphere, which I okay. thought was also very interesting that finally someone pointed that out. Um, but also, like, it made it to Saturday Night Live <laughs> where they were making fun of Imagine Dragons. Um, Side note, check out that clip. It's hilarious. But they're like, oh, yeah, have you heard of the sphere in Vegas and stuff like that? It's so interesting how it immediately became part of the cultural conversation. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as much as I am disappointed that the locals and a lot of these other really important uh, aspects of holistic community planning weren't seemingly considered when they allowed the sphere to be built, uh, you can't deny its impact immediately. That's for Mm -hmm. sure. Let's go to one last topic. And this one, you know, we get pitches all the time, press releases all the time here at CityCast Las Vegas. Some are really interesting. We love following up on them. Some are absolutely ridiculous. This is going to fall under that category. We got one that said, hey, did you know that Las Vegas is ranked 15th in candle love? (laughs) (laughs) I swear, these things come All the time. So apparently it was a company that is involved in repairing HVAC systems. Oh, expert on candles. Yeah. They have have a staff of (laughs) candle scientists. So they looked at uh, a couple of different metrics, like how many candle makers live in your community? How how easy is your access to candles and all this other pseudo garbage? Whatever. I don't. I almost don't want to talk about this because it sort of proves the point that sending out this nonsense will get replayed in public forums. Or, but we're not going to shout out their name. We're not going to give them credit. for Oh, this we're not even going to do that. OK, good, good, good. No. Yeah, so no, thank no. you for sending yeah. it to us. But it's so ridiculous. We're not going to give you any credit. Sorry. Sorry, HVAC. <laughs> Wow. Mystery people. As ridiculous <laughs> as the story is, and I really don't care if we're 15th ranked in candle love. Uh, I do wonder what the definitive... Vegas candle would be. So that's going to be my little sugar cube for the end of this episode is what do you think the Vegas scented candle would smell like? I feel like we have to start in the complimentary zone of like bristle cone trees. I love you. I love you, Vogue. Mm -hmm. You went high. We have to start there. I'm Mm going to go low. So you went high. That's the best. Bristle cone pine, sage. I was going to say, yes, in the rain, sun warmed sage was one of my because I love I just love Mm. picking a sage leaf as I'm hiking. I just, you know, put it up to my nose and crush the leaf a little bit. That Mm -hmm. is one of my favorite smells um, Mm -hmm. from the desert. But I also feel like I I have a I have a gross scent that I think is also very Vegas. I'm going to say sweat stained hundred dollar bills. It's gotta oh, be in there. that's so distinctive. <laughs> that is very distinctive. But like straight out of a bra. There's some ca- out of a bra. Out of a bra. <laughs> There's a person who comes to a place I work and hands me cash every Saturday, and I it's always it. out of her bra. And I'm like, oh, why? <laughs> yeah, but but sweating because a it's hot here, and b people work for their money. People really work for their money. So I'm just you know. Let's just. Uh, oh, so this is an that. ode to the hardworking Las you. Vegan. Yes. Yes. Now, would there be a variation on this scent that uh, comes from adult entertainment establishments? The, you pay extra extra for that candle. Yes. Mm-hmm. You pay yeah. extra for that candle. Every <laughs> candle candle. And it would also have a hint of cotton candy. I think. Oh sure, sure. Ew. One. From Circus Circus. Your no, beloved... no, I was thinking more from strip clubs, but now maybe oh, I'm giving okay. a little too much away about my life. I'm going to pray for y'all. <laughs> David, what is your candle scent? <laughs> um, I have favorite casinos that have very distinctive uh, aromas. There's some casinos I go in and when I come home, uh, I'm immediately given away like, were you at the El Cortez? <gasps> dun, dun, dun. What? Smoky. Da, da, da. 
So, yeah. So I guess that candle would be, and look, I, I, my heart, heart to the El Cortez, but it does have a distinctive aroma. And if you were to make that into a candle, I think it would be kind of ancient cigarettes, maybe some baby powder and just a dash of, just a dash of desperation. I think that would be the candle smell. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, and not to just pick on the El Cortez, that would apply to a lot of establishments in our city. That That's would be solid, a good David. Las Vegas candle. That's pretty poetic. Any casino over 30 years old gets that that scent. Or for over sure. Five I years have old, ancient frankly. cigarettes. I have one last ingredient for a Las Vegas scented candle, and that is the scent of freshly paved asphalt. Mm. <laughs> oh, God. And they're all going to be orange. Yes. Yes. The packaging is an orange cone. Oh my God. Vogue, that is the chef. You're welcome, Las Vegas. That is perfect. You're welcome. Well, also, you have to have a hint of carbon monoxide (laughs) in that as well. (laughs) Just a hint. Not enough to kill anybody. (laughs) These are are dead candles. The smell smell of lingering in construction traffic. Ah. Amazing. (laughs) All right. Well, I, I think this should come as a six pack. I think all these candles should be in yes. there. And then maybe Vegas next year will move up in these very important and science-based rankings. Here, here. Fogue Robinson, Sonia Cho Swanson, another fun Friday news roundup here on CityCast Las Vegas. Thanks for joining. Thanks, y'all. Thanks, David. That's all for today here on CityCast Las Vegas. Our executive producer is Sonia Cho Swanson. Our producer is Layla Muhammad. Our newsletter editor is Scott Dickensheets. And your hosts are Sarah Lohman and me, David Figler. Special thanks to producer Lizzie Goldsmith this week. Music is by OG Moose, Epidemic Sound, and All the Kimonos. We record this show on the traditional homelands of the new movie, the Southern Paiute people. If you enjoyed the show, I want you to go tell a friend. Go tell three friends. I'm going to tell you, this Spotify thing at the end of the year, people are loving us. So share it. Share it, share it, share it, and subscribe to our morning newsletter. We'll be back Monday morning with more news from around the city. Till then, y'all stay lucky. Y'all, nothing will top the title of one of the pieces, which was Sphere and Loathing in Las Vegas. Which that is excellent. It was right there for all of us to grab, and none that of us got it. I know. Uh. Mm.